off this video. I feel I feel I have to start off this video with a disclaimer. I know the Books and Lala just filmed a video just like this, and that's where I got the idea. However, this idea is not her idea. She got it from someone else, and I think it's been an idea that's been going around booktube for a while. I just don't want people to think that I just took Books and Lala idea and just like ripped it right off and uh, I'm passing it as my own. Definitely not. I definitely was inspired by her. So let's get into the video. So this video idea, I loved when I saw it because Kayla from Books and Lala, the person that inspired me to do this video, doesn't like her name. And I, on the contrary, really love my name. I think my name fits me really well. I love the nicknames that I have. Just in case you want to know, I do get called Mooney in real life by my siblings and by my American friends. Everybody kind of calls me Mooney. Nobody calls, like people call me Monica, but I just love the nickname Moon and the nickname Mooney. And I think the name Monica is like a common enough name where it's not like people don't spell it weird and stuff like that. And I think it has like a dark side. I don't know. I think Monica is like a darkish name. It's not like, I, I don't know. I keep thinking of Monica Bellucci and all of these like very glamorous women that um, I'm definitely not glamorous, but they, they, they give this air of mysteriousness to the name that I really like. Um, I know my name has no official meaning because there is no, just you know, I'm like an etymology nerd, so I love finding out where things come from. And the name Monica, it's either from like, there's some Greek influence, but it might be some North of Africa influence. And the most accepted form of the name is one woman, solitary woman or woman alone or something like that, which I think is really cool. I don't know, I, I really like that about my name. And I just thought it was an interesting thing about my name. And as you can guess, this book, this book, this video is all about books written by Monica's. But I wanted to up the ante because I'm sure that there are plenty of Monica authors. Like I said, my name is not very rare. It's not like a, a like a, a name that you wouldn't find somewhere. So I decided that I was gonna up the ante and I was gonna read three sci-fi books written by women named Monica or by at least people named Monica. I'm pretty sure all these people identify as female um, and use she her pronouns. But yeah, they're all named Monica and they all wrote sci-fi. There's one thing that I want to mention though when I was researching this. There's a woman named Monica, I think it's Hughes, and she has written like a ton of fantasy and sci-fi and yet none of her books are currently in print and finding them is horrible. I do know that there's this edition and I really wanted to get it but I could only get it from the US and bringing it to Spain was like double the price of the book so I would have ended up paying like 40 euros for a book which I have never done in my life and I don't think I will ever do, I don't know. Maybe there's a special edition of Dune out there. One day we'll get into my Dune editions but I did find three books and here I'm gonna present them to you. I'm gonna be reading these this week. I'm gonna be going away next week. Um, none of these books have audiobooks, so I'm gonna be a little bit slower reading them, but that's okay because I kind of need an audiobook break. But anyway, which one was the first one I found? The first one I found was Monica Enderly Pierce, and she wrote Girl Under Glass, and this is book one of the Glass and Iron series. I know that she writes a lot of like graphic violence and she doesn't shy away from that it actually says that in her bio but um the back of this says what do you do when you're trapped between death and the devil to protect her young daughter from a madman and a tyrant rachel prine must trust an enemy one of the alien warriors who conquered earth she knows she may be choosing death over the devil but she doesn't know that her trust and her dna will make her one of the most important and endangered people to ever set foot on board an anenre anenre starship so basically there are these uh, aliens called the Onenres and uh, they have conquered Earth and Rachel lives in like a compound and from what I heard there is trigger warning for rape here because her daughter Pearl was conceived forcefully upon her and there's not a lot of humans left so yeah and she has to team up with this guy 
whose name I will never be able to mention. I'm uh, sorry, I will not, I will never be able to pronounce. But he's an alien and he's gonna help her save her daughter. Sounds really cool. Sounds like a badass book with a badass protagonist. I am so into it. The next Monica book that we have is The Girl in the Road by Monica Byron. And this was actually blurred by Neil Gaiman, though I never listen to blurbs because I know people get paid to write them. But it says, a future that feels so close you can touch it, blend it with lush, with lush language. Glorious. That sounds really cool. So let's read the back. One day, Mina gets out of bed covered in blood with mysterious snake spikes on her chest. Someone is after her, and she must flee India at once. Oh, I didn't know this was based, like, in India. As she plots her escape, she learns of the trail, an energy-harvesting bridge across the Arabian Sea. It has become a refuge for in... it... it... in... it... <laughs> itinerant? It... it... itinerant? It, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> itinerant dreamers and loners on the run. Now it will become Mina's salvation. With a knapsack full of supplies, Mina sets off across the bridge of Ethiopia, the place of her birth. But as she runs away from the threat of violence, she is also running towards a, a shocking revelation about her past. This was blurbed also by John Scalzi. He says the road trip novel you didn't know you were waiting for, a genuine and extraordinary journey. Take it. Mm. So this is blurred by actually a lot of people. There's the, the author of The Gollum and the Ginny, utterly captivating and electrifying debut. Oh, so this is a debut novel. A brilliant novel, vivid, spark, sparky, <laughs> fearless, intense, what a kind, savage joy, utterly unforgettable by Kim Stanley Robinson. So this is actually the third book that I found written by Monica. Um, and this was the winner of the Tip Tree Award for 2015. This is actually self-published, so. And then we have Monica Tesler who wrote Bounders. I have no idea what this is about. Let's see. 13 years ago, Earth Force, a space military agency, discovered a connection between brain structure and space travel. Now they've brought together a premier class of cadets bounders to train as elite astronauts at earthbound academy yeah this is by the way a obviously from you can tell i don't know if you can tell by the shiny shiny cover but it's a i think this is a middle grade i think so 12 yeah 12 year old jasper might have been bullied back on earth but as one of the first bounders sent to space he gets to be part of something bigger he and the other cadets have a blast bunking at the space station flying jetpacks and finally connecting with other kids like them but soon the cadets discover that Earth Force has been keeping secrets. Oh my god, already love it. <laughs> the Bounders were brought to space for aeronaut training, but to learn a highly classified technology that allows them to manipulate matter and to quantum bound. Well, that's pretty, that's a, that, that's a big thing for, for this age range. Travel anywhere in the galaxy in an instant without a spaceship. And that's not the only secret that Earth Force has been keeping. When Jasper and his friends find out the truth about the way Earth Force needs the Bounders, they have to make a choice. Do they rebel against the academy that brought them together? Or do they fulfill their duties and protect the planet no matter the cost? With an alien threat on the horizon, they don't have much time to decide. Okay, now I, you can tell. This is one that I'm the most excited about. So, as for reading Monica books, I'm not gonna do like a lot of, you know, other things with Monica's that it's strange. Like, I know the most famous Monica you probably know of is Monica Lewinsky. And she deserves respect. She was abused by a man in power. That's all I'm gonna say on that subject. But as far as me liking this book, I'm gonna put this one at the bottom because I think this one's gonna be a little bit violent for me and it's going to, I don't know, it's, it seems the most tropey. Then I'm gonna put this one and then I'm gonna put this one. So I think the one I'm gonna like the most is Bounders, then The Girl in the Road, and then Girl Under Glass. So up. So I think this is the order that I'm gonna like them in. We'll see throughout the week of me reading these. Um, uh, like I said, I'm going on vacation, so I might 
find the Kindle book. I know there's one for this one and this one, but not for this one. So I'll just take this one or I'll read this one before we go on vacation. I don't know. I haven't read a physical book in a while, so we'll see how it goes. I hope that I definitely enjoy these books because I'm really looking forward to them. So I started reading my first book in the Monica book. Uh, the Monica sci-fi book reading series and I decided to go with Bounders because I'm so excited for it and I'm already on page 25 and from what I can tell these kids are somehow neurodivergent in fact they use the word neurodivergent in the book so that's really exciting and um, I don't know if they just discovered that they have some kind of mind powers because of their neurodivergence I don't I don't know I just I felt that I needed to update you because so far it's really good. I really love a good middle grade where parents are really good or parents are in the story in some way and the parents in this one seem really cool. There's the little sister and you know bounders are bred to be this way. They have special genes so that they can do these quantum calculations to travel across stars and from what i can tell they don't say it but i think our main character has adhd or add i don't know they don't say it but we do hear the word neurodivergent so um i think every kid that is in this book oh one of my pages is bent hang on every kid that is in this book is neurodivergent somehow at least the bounders are so that's pretty cool I'm only 25 pages in this reads really fast because again it's a middle grade I want to get to page 150 today how many pages is this book 300 this is a series so I might end up picking up the whole series so this is 366 pages that will take me about I'm going to say three days to read so I'll keep updating you I just thought that I would update you I think I, I don't know there there's this line here that makes me think that they have some kind of superpowers also i didn't show you the inside of this book the inside of this book is so cool it's like it's i don't know if it's showing up on camera but it's a navy and it's got this really cool red um like this is the insignia of the earth force and the idea is that the earth is in the center and these are the planets that we're going to conquer I've been reading this on and off all day like I stopped reading because I'm tired of reading because I've read 210 pages which is not normal for me when I'm reading in physical format but you know this is middle grade so I guess I, I'm gonna give it to myself either way it's so good like I stopped reading it and I want to keep reading it um, there's a lot of bullying that happens in this book that is really intense and um, it's I don't know I, I found I found it quite quite difficult to read but at the same time I love the camaraderie between the main protagonist and this kind of does remind me a little bit of um, Rick Riordan Rick Riordan Rick Riordan <laughs> I can't say I've never said that out loud um, but anyway of um, Percy Jackson and then the Olympians the way you know you make friends and stuff like that and I love the way that the kids act like kids that that part really gets to me like this is what I wish why I was again I, I keep saying it it also reminds me of Orion Lost just because you know sci-fi uh middle grade where children actually act like children who knew but and yeah I'm quite loving this I'm not sure I'm gonna finish it today I I'm not trying to finish it today you know it's like I'm not <laughs> I'm not like, ooh, have to finish a book a day. Although, if I do finish it, <laughs> I'll let you know. Simply because I can't put it down. Like, I put it down for a while because I get tired of reading and then I go back to it. It's amazing. Why haven't more people read this? I think sci-fi middle grade is so, like, not appreciated on booktube and I don't know why and again we have a diverse cast of characters neurodivergent characters it's it's so good it's so good I'm loving it I'm loving it I'm this far in I am 54% through I just checked on goodreads I'm on page 210 chapter 14 love 
love this book. I'm so glad that I picked it up. Good morning. It's, it hasn't been a good morning for me. Um, I, as a person of this world that menstruates, started my cycle last night, started menstruating last night, and um, I was in so much pain that I woke up three times in a night to take ibuprofen, and after that, this morning, it was so bad that I just had to just lay in bed in fetal position until it went away. But, thankfully, the painkillers have kicked in, and I am in somewhat of a wonderful, blissful moment of no pain. So, we're gonna pick up where we left off, the bound, um, bound, bounders, bound, I will always wanna say the bounderless. I am on page 255 of this book, so I have about 100 pages left. We're gonna knock this out today, and then tomorrow I'm getting my vaccine. Um, that's usually a really quick process here. Yeah, tomorrow is vaccine day. And then we got the weekend. I hope I can finish another book on the weekend so that I can just take my one book and my audiobooks to my in-laws house in the mountains where we're gonna spend an entire week and I'm gonna I don't know put a little bit of makeup on you know get get to feeling myself again and um, ignore the fact that my uterus is trying to kill me I look a little bit more put together but I just have to say that I finished Boundless by Monica Tesler and I gave it five out of five stars. I was just thinking like, sci-fi for kids is really good. I think that the amazing thing about sci-fi for kids is that it doesn't talk down to kids. It just assumes that kids are just intelligent readers. And I can see, I can re if I had read this as a 12 year old, which is the age for this book and i and i think that that's a good age but i think that this also reads a little bit like older like if i had picked this up when i was a little bit older i would have gotten sucked into the world of sci-fi because this just is so so good i mean everything the characters are well developed everything and, and i just I remember when I got into sci-fi this this brought me back to when I got into sci-fi when I was what I think I was nine and I was reading um, Animorphs and it, I had the same feeling it's like it wasn't talking down to me and the, the whole idea of the galaxy and exploring the galaxy and also being part of a group it's just some, something that I just love about sci-fi and I love that about sci-fi for children and I think Monica Tesler's book is amazing this Monica did not let me down five out of five stars this is actually a series I think it's a five book series I'm hooked I'm gonna read all five books and I'm gonna buy them all in hardback so they match this beautiful shiny hardback and I just think it's really really good I think even adults will enjoy this because the kids are well written but the adults are also well written that's something that I find so awesome also with the the sci-fi for kids that I've read is that the adults are well written and the kids rely on the adults a lot which is something that I personally haven't found in fantasy for children I think it's usually just you know they rely on the children but I I think it's or, or maybe I haven't read enough fantasy for children but this just brought me back to being nine years old and picking up my first Animorphs book and you can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with that. You know, that's what got me into reading in the first place and into reading sci-fi. So, yeah. I, I loved everything about this. I loved the representation. I loved the neurodivergence of it all. And I think that this book, I, I don't know how it's flown under the radar. Well, I do know because not only is adult sci-fi not really read on booktube except for like niche little groups, but let alone middle grade sci-fi and i think we're sitting on middle grade sci-fi and we shouldn't be because it's really really good so i i have nothing but praise for this book nothing nothing but praise i am so happy i read it uh i i think this is gonna be the best of the monica series for books so if you haven't picked up bounders by monica tesler i definitely recommend that you pick it up um sci-fi um uh, September what is it called 
sci-fi opera September is coming and this would be a great book to pick up for that. It's an easy read, it's by a female author and it's definitely a space opera and I like the twist at the end. I obviously, I'm gonna guess the twist, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna guess what's going on or at least I think I'm gonna guess what's going on a lot faster than maybe a child. I'm sorry, there's trucks. But let's wait till it passes. Oh my god, everything is full of cat hair. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'm guessing the twist is something in my head and, but I would, I'm still gonna read them. I'm gonna read every single book in this um, series. I'm so taking advantage of this nice lighting. I can't even. So the next two books that I have to pick up for this are The Girl um, in the Road and Girl Under Glass. I'm leaning toward The Girl Under Glass more. A, because it's shorter. B, because I think I'm gonna like it less. And I wanna take a book that I'm gonna really like on vacation. So I don't know. Um, these don't have the best ratings on Goodreads, but I think I'm gonna like this one less, like I said, because it deals with a lot of hard topics. And I think there again, I there's um, in the Goodreads, I think, or in her page, there is a content warning for um, sexual assault and violence. And she herself says um, in an interview that she's not against writing violence in her book. So I think I'm gonna pick this one up next. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this one up next. And I will update you. I don't know if I'm going to read anything today, but we'll see. We'll see. I haven't read anything, but you haven't seen my husband in a while. Say hi. Hi. And we're going to have something typically, typically Spanish, which is gazpacho. We're having gazpacho. And we're having just the same chicken, leftover chicken, so it doesn't go bad. And we made another big salad that we're going to eat today and tomorrow and that's lunch I just thought you'd be interested because I read that somebody was like it's so interesting to see what like people from all over the world are doing this is basically our day-to-day -day. like I say we don't go out a lot because we are still not fully vaccinated and there's still like a lot of restrictions here so there's not a lot we can do anyway except go out to eat and we don't go out to eat that that often. We we used to. But we cut back. We cut back on the uh, eating out for um, money reasons. <laughs> right, babe? Yes. Say hi to the camera. Hi again. All right. Okay, I'm gonna eat. I'll update you when I've ate. When I've ate? No. When I've read anything. <laughs> so, yes, it's me again. Today's been a very eventful day. But I started Girl Under Glass, book one of the Glass and Iron series by Mon Monica Enderly Pierce. I am about, um, I would say I'm, I'm about 40 pages into this book, so not very much into it. Here's the thing. I don't like that she speaks to inanimate object, objects. Like she talks to the fence like, oh, I remember when you used to not creak so much. It's like, why Why do you, <laughs> like, couldn't that just have been a thought she had or something like that? I was trying to decide if I was liking this or not because I think this is definitely one of those cases where this is clearly, I don't know if this was seen by an editor or something because I, knew, I do know that this is self-published that doesn't mean it wasn't seen by an editor but I think there could have been entire paragraphs taken out of the story and yet and yet I find myself wanting to read more and more and more so I am intrigued so far I know that there's this woman called Rachel she's the main protagonist it's funny to me that the main protagonist is not named Monica because in my head her name is Monica but um, Rachel has a daughter, Pearl, and so far from what I've seen, she's a medic that li lives like in the outside of the city because she did something that rendered her like a sinner in the na like in the eyes of the people, and it seems like they live in a very religious compound. There's these elders, I don't know what they are, and it turns out that the aliens are not necessarily aliens, but they're kind of like augmented humans. 
in a way and they have blue blood and they explained it all that but I you know I'm not I'm, I don't remember why they have blue blood I just know they have blue blood and well one basically crashes on the planet suffer it, it's called suffer yeah it has a longer name but they call it suffer which I mean great name for a planet and it seems like before the what are they called onenre onenre <laughs> those are the those are the augmented humans were fighting with the humans and then they turned against the humans and now like they're like the bad guys but because she's a medic she has to take care of everyone um so this onenre comes in and he's like hey i need help and he's like all fucked up and uh but he seems like a nice guy I mean, compared to everyone in town, he seems like a nice guy. Everybody treats Rachel like shit, and she just heals them. And I'm like, why did he treat you like shit, Rachel? Like, I don't know what she did. I do know that she was forcibly, um, or she was sexually assaulted by one of the town elders. And um, she got pregnant, not by her husband. And another important part of the story is that it seems like there are no girls being born in this town, only boys. And like every time somebody's pregnant with a girl, they either miscarry or the baby doesn't live. But Rachel has a daughter named Pearl. Now from what I gather, I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but this is like a lot. This was an info dump, but it didn't feel like an info dump um, in the first 40 pages. Um, um, it seems like the elders are going to take Pearl, who is Rachel's daughter, when she turns eight. I don't know to do what I don't I'm kind of scared to know for what you know it's kind of like why are you taking an eight-year-old like that's weird I think it's because um since she lives outside of the city they want to indoctrinate her into this god-fearing thing because one of the things that they say about the Onenri Onenrei 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 <laughs> I'm never gonna say that right is that they don't believe in God so they're really god-fearing um Am I enjoying this book so far? I think I am. I'm interested. I'm interested. There are definitely things that are like, uh, about, you know, like her talking to the fence and being like, I remember when you didn't creak. I'm like, who talk? I don't talk like that. Do you talk like that to inanimate objects? Like, I'm not like, phone. I remember when you didn't have a cracked screen. You know, I don't do that shit. <laughs> like, maybe make it a thought instead of that. But, I'm really interested in this Ananre, Ananre person. He seems really cool and I think he's going to be really important. Oh, and Pearl's parents died in the whole instruction. I'm not telling you anything like that is a spoiler because this is literally in chapter 2, which is on page 13. So, and they told her that they'd come for her. So Rachel like is holding up hope that somebody's going to come for her and I don't know, take her away from this horrible town because really this is a horrible place. Um, I believe they're on Earth, so yeah, it seems horrible. Um, the, the, the one thing that I, I am kind of really enjoying it is that the world reminds me a little bit of Star Wars. It's like a little bit of Tatooine, if like Tatooine had really crazy religious zealots and stuff like that. And I, I just kind of like this grungy kind of sci-fi instead of like the more... I don't know, stylized, everything is white and clean and sterile sci-fi. This is kind of like grim and, and grungy. And I like that. So, so far, I guess I am enjoying this. But the writing style is not my fave. You know, the writing style is not something that I would normally gravitate toward. But the story is capturing me. So, we'll see how much of this I read uh, today. I'll update you. I keep thinking like what if I DNF a Monica book? It's fine if you DNF a Monica book, but I don't know. It seems interesting so far. I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. So this is where we've been staying for the last couple of days and where I've been doing no reading at all. Right, babe? Right. I read a little bit. A little bit. So I hope today I get some reading done because I really have read nothing for like five days. <laughs> I want to make it clear that I hate surprises and this man has planned a whole day where I don't know where I'm going, where I'm going to eat or anything. 
So I'm gonna go before I get demonetized. I'm not monetized, whatever. You can hear Leonard Skinner. But I'm gonna show you a little bit of the road. Something. There you go. So he's a horrible man that has prepared a surprise for me. <laughs> read anything for like five days <laughs> but last night I did get to 50% of um, the girl under glass now I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't know this was a romance and it's very clearly an alpha male very stoic very you know <laughs> like very very uh, you know that that kind of romance you know and that's just not my thing I think I said this in the last clip but you got to remember that for me, the last clip, my hair's falling out. <laughs> it's normal because of the weather. But anyway, I have decided that I'm going to finish this today. Today! Because I have nothing else to do. I'm home alone. I'm on part three, which is synthesis. Which is page 140 out of... How many pages does this have? 288. So that's about 140 pages. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And we're going to do it because i really want to finish this vlog up before next week and i'm like thinking like what am i gonna read next i also think i'm a little bit science fiction out which is crazy because i love science fiction but i've been reading like the last seven to ten books that i've read have been science fiction so um i think after this we're gonna switch gears up a little bit and i'm gonna well i did read i did read something in between but it's not part of this vlog we're finishing this today okay see this is what i mean with her like talking to herself or imagining like inanimate objects and it's it's just mm, you know like 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 this could have been thought not said you know show don't tell and it, it, it says finally i sighed and wiped my tears and snot on the sheets no more self-pity rachel prime you don't have time for that shit i said to myself <laughs> my hair is a damn mess but anyway i finished girl under glass by monica enderly pierce now here's the thing i think if you're really into romance you are going to like this book a lot more than i did i gave it a 3.75 because the parts that were not romance were really good and the romance is not really heavy it's just that during the middle it seems the book for me lagged because it focused a little bit too much on the romantic part and like building this relationship and I have to admit that Rachel reminded me a lot of myself because I'm like when I'm angry I want to stay angry and Rachel wants to stay angry so it was it was a lot of like I hate you I hate you I hate you but I love you but I hate you you know so it was a lot of that and yeah I give it 3.75 stars. It was really good. I think I might continue with this series. I'm not pretty sure what happened in the end. There was a lot of double crossing and stuff like that. But it was good. This book definitely doesn't shy away from violence. I had to skim most of the... because I, And I always do this in every book. I skim a lot of the um, fighting parts. Because I'm like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Just who wins, you know? <laughs> so... It was good. I think I might continue with this series because there's another one uh, um, which is called The Mother Element which is book two in the Glass and Iron series. And I don't know, I really, I, I think I enjoyed this book way more than I give it credit for. I think I was kind of in a book slump and like I said I was kind of like science fictioned out so yeah. But anyway. 3.75 and I'm really glad that I have this I'm not gonna buy the other ones in physical but I'm really glad I've got this physical cover because it's so cool so yeah one more Monica book to go and we'll see how it goes it's um, the girl on the train I found it funny that this was was girl on the glass and the other one was girl on the train both sci-fi written by Monica's I thought that was funny 
Anyway, we're going through a heat wave, so I'm gonna go turn the AC on, just relax in my bed, and tomorrow I'll start another book. So I haven't updated you in a while because I've been trying to read this for ages for ages really this book I don't understand what's happening <laughs> like I have no idea what is happening in this book I am just kind of cruising along just letting it happen but I have no idea what is happening I'm about a hundred pages in I want to get it finished by today that's my plan my plan is to finish this book today because I have the audiobook and I'm listening to it and I just don't understand what's going on I really have no idea what's going on like I feel like if I was reading um, Philip K. Dick which if you don't know my story with Philip K. Dick is that he and I just don't get along you know he doesn't write for me and I think Monica Byrne it doesn't write for me um everything is kind of fantastical there are two points of view I think see that's the thing I like there's two points of view there's Mariama and Mina and I can't tell them apart well I can kind of one of them sees things and the other one, I don't know if, it, <coughs> sorry, I don't know if they're the same person, just in different times in their lives, but I'm just like lost. I'm completely lost. Um, I, mm, so far this is the, the bottom of the list. Like, you know, this is, this Monica is at the bottom at the moment. <laughs> it, it, it's, I don't know what to say. Like. What is the plot of this book? I, I have no idea what the plot of this book is. Am I too stupid for this book? There is a big possibility that it's just that I'm too stupid for this book. But um, yeah, I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna finish it even if I have to force myself to it because I wanna get this vlog up. I, I really wanna get this vlog up. It was supposed to go up last week and it didn't because I just couldn't get myself to read this book and it's so sad because like that cover is really cool anyway so I'm still gonna keep it because I want to have Monica's on my shelf but yeah um just an update to let you know that I'm 100 pages in into this I'm on book five it's something about the prose that I'm not quite jiving with um I can see why Neil Gaiman uh blurbed this because there's something very similar to his prose, but with his prose I can kind of understand better or like at least by 100 pages in I'm kind of clued in into what's going on more or less. Here I just, I think Mina and Mariama are the same person, just at different points in their lives, but I don't know. I don't know what's happening. So that's my update for this book. I don't, I don't foresee myself like loving this book, but watch it turn around because that happens a lot with Neil Gaiman books. Like, like at the beginning, I'm like, what's, what the fuck is going on? And then it just turns around. And, I, and I'm just bringing up Neil Gaiman because he blurbed the book and I did mention that I really like Neil Gaiman's work. So maybe I will like this because he endorsed it. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you yet. I'm gonna keep reading and hopefully we'll get this finished today and I'll get all my thoughts on this and the rest of the Monica books up for you soon. Okay, I feel stupid, but no, I just looked it up because I was really confused. Like things were not making sense. It's just that the, I don't think you can really tell the difference between Mina and Mariama when they're, when, you know, their, their POVs come up. But Mina is a young woman from India and Mariama is an enslaved in Africa. So basically, they're not the same person. We're not following like a dual timeline thing. We're just following two different people, people of color. I just feel that I cannot tell them apart when they speak. I mean, kind of, because I think Mina, who is the one that is crossing the bridge. There's a bridge. She has to cross it um, to get to Ethiopia. 
she just has to escape my we don't know why um she she sounds a little bit older like she reads a little bit older and Mariama is a little bit younger so I think that's how it goes now so now that I get that I think I can enjoy this book a lot more because before I was just completely lost I had no idea what was going on and so I just read some reviews on Goodreads and now they have illuminated me to my um, lack of reading comprehension so just wanted to update you on that Mina is not Mariama Mariama is not Mina and also why would you name them such similar things I just don't understand but I'm gonna keep reading I'm gonna keep reading and we'll see Let's talk about the good things first. I really liked how this book dealt, it was all POC. It was, um, that, that part was great. That's it. <laughs> I, I didn't like it. I, I gave this book two stars. And if you can see, I didn't really update you much on it. Because as I was reading it, I was just like... I'm not enjoying you at all and I there is one scene in this book and I will throw out a content warning out there for child molestation but it seemed like a good thing and that really bothered me and I just I mm, I gave it two stars this is definitely the worst of the Monica books I actually I, I kept thinking that I, I told you the the one uh girl under glass the other one i thought that was going to be worse but this is definitely definitely worse i have nothing to say about this book um i didn't get it i again i did like the part where it deals mainly with people of color it talks a lot about um and enslavement and things like that but um, overall there was a lot of like phallic references also in the book which we all know how I feel about phallic references it's just not my favorite thing in books and I didn't have a great time with this one the science fiction aspects of it were really interesting I really liked I, I, I cannot express to you enough how much I liked the fact that this was all based in India and in Africa and it there is no I don't think there's even a white character in the book honestly and I really appreciated that but other than that I think that this book just it missed the mark it missed the mark um, for me I've seen some people rate it really high I think it's a very divisive book but honestly, that scene with the with the child molestation and all of that, it, it was too much for me. And it wasn't something that I... I can't give this book more than two stars because of that. It, the way it was portrayed was very like, oh, the child is having this wonderful experience. And the child is the one that, like, looks for this... I can't... I can't. I can't. I'm gonna give this two stars. Um, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. There, there are so many good things here, but I think, yeah, it, it, it was outweighed by the bad for me. So, two stars to The Girl in the Road by Monica Barn, which really sucks because I was really looking forward to this. I wanted some diversity in my sci-fi reads. This is definitely a soft sci-fi. Um, but I was just lost throughout most of this book. Just lost. <laughs> so here we are at the end of the Monica reading readathon. <laughs> I guess that's what you call it. And I read three sci-fi books written by Monica's. My cat is going in the litter box. So here's the wrap up for the I guess it was it was like two weeks of reading Monica books. Um, just as a reminder, these are all science fiction books written by women called Monica. And I did look up and all of them identified as women. So um, how did it go? Well, 
it went pretty well for the first week where I read my favorite book, which was Bounders by Monica Tesler. This book tells the story of kids um, being thrown into space travel, basically. And it's a series, and I actually plan on continuing with the series because it was so good. Now, this was my top book. I gave this five out of five stars. I really loved it. You saw all my praise for it in the, in the video, and I don't think I have to say any more about this. So it's the shiny cover. It's got a really shiny cover, and I don't know. I, I enjoyed reading this a lot. Like like every second of reading this was a lot of fun there was some parts that were a little bit slow but i think that's because i was reading in physical format and you guys know that physical books are not my ideal reading um medium so i think that that was it but overall i really enjoyed this book and i recommend that you pick it up really i know that middle grade sounds like it's like for kids but i think that there's a lot of Good in this book i like how it was written i like the characters they seem realistic the neurodivergent representation was really good and also the poc present representation because there's characters from all over the world and it's just such a really good read even even if you are an adult i think especially if you're an adult because there's something magical about capturing your childhood and i think that that childhood whimsy of when your kid was captured really well on here so Founders by Monica Tesler. Love it. And I already ordered book two of this. The next book that I read was a <laughs> romance, <laughs> which I was not expecting it to be because in, when I went to the author's website, this is how I found this, um, this book, uh, which is called Girl on Your Glass. It didn't mention that this was a romance. But I have to be honest, the romance isn't that bad. It's not, it, it has some steamy scenes, but they're not really like very graphic. And um, I, I, I liked it. I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. I did have problems again with, I felt this was very Wada Patty. But I, don't, I think maybe that might be because I don't read a lot of romance and that's what I think. Like, you know, like, I, I think it read a little bit fan fiction-y in a way. But it's, it was still a really good story and it has some good twists in it. I love the female main character. She's a total badass and she's going to totally make it into my um, badass mothers of sci-fi video that I plan to put out. And yeah, this was really good. I gave it four stars. And again, I am going to continue with this story, but I am going to continue with it in um, Kindle fam format instead of the physical format. Although I must admit, the cover for these for this book and the, and the following book i will insert it right here are really really cool looking i love these covers and honestly i really liked the book i i i really liked it even though it had that sort of domineering alpha male sort of um you know energy of you know i am so emotionally detached but i love you you know it was kind of like that so um, that was the only thing, but I did give it four stars, so that was still pretty good. And then the last book that I read, and the book that took me the longest to get through, and also the book that I enjoyed the least, is Girl in the Road by Monica Byron. Now, the problem with this book in part was the prose. I didn't enjoy the prose, and as you know, that's not something that usually happens to me. Like, prose, I can get through. I can get through a lot of things when it comes to, like, writing styles. But the writing style in this just confused me a lot. I was confused throughout the book. Also, the two main uh, POVs were named so similarly that I kept forgetting who was who. And also, there is a scene that I really didn't like. I already talked about it. It, it just wasn't for me. I guess this has an audience. I just can't get past that scene, though. I, I, I wish it hadn't been written in this book because it's... It's a lot. It's a lot. And, and, and it's the problem. I don't mind problematic scenes in books. The problem is, is when they're seen as good things. Like, for example, in Flowers in the Attic, once again, I always bring it up. The incest in that is seen as something that is bad. They try to hide it and everything. In here, what happened was that a child got, you know, basically masturbated by an adult and it was addressed like a good thing like the child had like this spiritual awakening because of it and mm, i wasn't about that so also i just just didn't like
like this book. It didn't jive with me. So this was by Monica Byron. This one I gave two stars. So originally I thought it was going to be... So originally I thought it was going to be like this. I thought it was going to have Bounders as number one, then The Girl on the Road as number two, and then Girl Under Glass number three. But actually what ended up happening is it went like this. Bounders, um, Girl Under Glass, and um, The Girl in the Road. So that's it for this video. What did I learn? <laughs> First of all, I learned <laughs> I really like my name. <laughs> I know I said this before, but I'm not one of those people that has issues with their name. I think my name is really, I, I, I like it. I like my name and I think it fits me and my personality. I, like I said, I think Monica is a little bit of a dark name. And what's interesting is I found a little bit of darkness in all of these reads. It's not like straight up sci-fi or anything like that. They have their little like dark side, their little mysterious side. And I, and I thought that was cool. And it introduced me to some new authors and two of them I'm going to continue reading from. So, and it, I mean, if Monica Byron ever writes anything else, I might pick it up because why not? I mean, um, I might pick it up just, yeah. This was a really cool experiment. I recommend that you do it. I recommend that you do it especially um, with your favorite genre because if you pick, like for example, if I had picked a high fantasy written by a Monica, of course I was not going to be into that because I'm not into high fantasy. But because I picked sci-fi, I think that that really helped the process. So yeah, this was a fun experiment. I don't think I'm going to do it again because finding women named Monica the right sci-fi was really difficult. <laughs> it was so difficult, you have no idea. But um, I might do it for other genres or I might just look up more Monica books. But um, I'm glad to have these in my collection. I didn't have any author named Monica before this. And what did I learn? I don't know that sometimes you kind of have to throw yourself out there and see where you land, you know? I always used to say to my sister, um, sometimes you just have to throw yourself off the cliff. The worst thing that can happen is that the water is cold. Of course, you know, there can also be rocks and you can die, but usually the worst thing that can happen is that the water is cold. And um, trying new authors that are not popular on booktube and, and, and also, you know, um, learning. I don't know if it's learning a little bit about yourself because I don't think you can learn your, about yourself because just somebody's named the same as you. But um, there, there is something really nice about being like, wow, a Monica wrote that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, had a, I had a lot of fun making it really. I was just really stressed out about this one because I wasn't enjoying it and I was forcing myself to read it and it started another reading break because that's what we're going to call reading slumps now. We're not going to call them slumps, we're going to call them breaks because I'm just taking a break from reading right now. But without any further ado, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in another galaxy far, far away. Bye!